Okay, so we're going to be back in this sort of setup that I've got here. Uh, yeah. Um, I was actually doing something with the winter bee, but I was thinking, right, probably a good thing to look at would be the water bees. Um, so, yeah. Um, that might be a cool thing to do. Let's just uh, uh, let's get some more stuff. Let's see what we get from them. Now, the thing is, right, one way I could uh, perhaps increase the speed of this stuff if, if, if I um, get an imprinter. Um, now, I wonder if I can get a gene. Uh, what is this? Lifespan shortest. I wonder if I can take a. So obviously gonna get watery combs from that. Let's have a look. This, by the way, I want to hold on to that because I, I uh, I'm gonna look at that in a bit. Um, hmm. All right. So we can get ink sacs from uh, the frozen combs, uh, from the watery combs rather. All right. So. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't mind seeing if I can do, if I could put, uh, I wonder if, can I put that in there? Or well, can you only put this on a, uh, oh yeah, sorry, I need to mix this together with a, uh, how do you get it to actually, uh, yeah, you put the B in and then you put the blank gene, so I need a, to get some blank gene samples, don't I? And then I can put it in here. I was actually doing this before. Hmm. Well, maybe I wasn't. <laughs> no, I was. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's in this thing. All right. So we want to get the. Uh, so yeah, in fact, I don't need to sample it because this would actually be the thing that actually gets me the sample. So yeah, so this is how I'd actually get a sample out of a bee. What I would do is I'd put a bee in, and then it would actually just give me one of the uh, chromosomal traits. But obviously, I've skipped that step here, um, and I've just taken the trait that I actually want because I could be here all day just looking for the right one. Uh, and that's assuming I can find a bee with this particular thing in it. Um, so yeah, so we need to make the genetic template And you place some ferns to erase the content. Yeah, and then so you, you can add to a template. There's no risk. So yeah. So you would make a template like that, wouldn't you? And then you add it in just in the regular crafting grid, that's it. Alright, so we put that and then we want lifespan shortest. Because you see I want the queen to die quickly because um, you see a normal life I want it to be the shortest life here so if I put that in there put that in there it should be able to take that and you can see we've got the water bees here let me just uh, get some more water bees uh, So this should give me what I need in terms of. Uh, so I do want to actually just check something then. So one of the interesting things about a lot of this uh, gene stuff is that I've often wondered, like, um, what's actually going to happen if I, if without, if we don't do any, I'm not going to think about mutations at this point. I'm more thinking like, you know, what does what. I've always wondered, like, I mean, there's a thing about dominant and recessive. There's obviously, you know, the uh, uh, the punnets stuff. But I wonder if it really works like that. I think it may be just the, the case that all I have to do is, um, basically, if I've got a bee here, so I've got a bee here, this bee, 
that's got shortest life. So that has been a, that is a genetically modified bee, right? This bee, on the other hand, so if we look at these two bees here, let me just put another, uh, uh, let me just put another princess in there. Uh, All right, so we'll let, we'll let that thing go. We'll just we'll just make some more water bees as well. So you can see I've got I've got two bees. Right? Uh, I didn't mean to do that one. Um, all right, so we're just making water bees. I'm going to obviously focus on mutations in a minute, but I just wanted to. I'm going to start doing this bit as well. Um, I probably won't do the DNA section of things because that is probably a little step too far. But um, but yeah, so we know for a fact that we've got this shortest life bee. And now the interesting thing is, this should be a this is a pristine bee because I just I've just taken it out of creative. So we look at that, we can see we've got uh, so the watery is uh, red is dominant, and the thing is though, like this stuff about dominant, like the Punnett square and dominance and and uh, recessive, and you know like uh, all these sort of experiments that were you know Men Mendel genetics and stuff like that, Mendelian genetics genetics is like not this this is not really this it's this is this is it feels like it's pro if you really look at it and if you watch like lectures about this stuff like i do it's way more complicated than that anyway um and also it's all it's all very it's it's very hard to understand so um yeah you also get this one generation to captivity on this um but yeah so we can see normal normal slowest flowers two nine so this bee here should be exactly the same, right? Can I actually put two bees in at the same time? I wish you could, that would be pretty cool. The thing is, I can't really compare. The only way I can really compare is if I actually just watch the video and, and skip to different sections. So I will have to do that, unfortunately. Um, yeah, it's, it's, and one of the interesting things about forestry, of course, is that, for instance, this says, this says this is part of magic bees. Which is interesting. I think I think I've I looked at that a million times anyway. So you can see this has got shortest life. From what I can tell, slowest. From what I can tell, that has not changed anything else. But here's the interesting thing, right? This, to me, yeah, this is like it's hard to explain. It's like it's like it's almost like if a human. Um, I don't know. It's kind of like the thing where if a human is born without an appendix, like some are, are they still human? It's like a weird thing that you could almost say that, like, the de the definition. I don't know, because you could really say that they're not actually still a human because humans have got append, uh, you know, like appendices. Um, but here's the thing, right? I mean, this should be pretty obvious, but I do wonder, like. I don't know. To me, it's not really obvious. So much. To be honest, I'm so used to stuff not being obvious for, for really obvious for me. Misunderstanding really obvious stuff. That this this is just why I'm like this. So we're going to put this one in here. We can see this has got shortest life. So it should die early, and it should produce ones which have got shortest life. You see, I remember when I first started playing with forestry. Like I always thought, like that the the, the the fact that it was, the actual name of the bee itself was more important than any other trait. You know, basically the species trait was more important than any other. Because I thought, like, well, what happens if you get, you know, for instance, say you've got a meadows bee. What if I just change all the other chromosomes? If I change all the other chromosomes to uh, the meadows bee chromosomes, right? But just leave it, but it happens by just imprint that on, a, on like a watery bee, say. Then how is that still a watery bee? I've always, that is the thing that is always just like giving me a huge, like, like what? But it turns out that, that all that stuff that I thought about that is actually useless to think about, and it took me a long time to actually understand that. It's not really like that at all. It's actually much kind of like more simple than I thought it was, um, which is good because <laughs> it had been like that. I probably would still not really be able to get anywhere. But now I feel like I can actually get somewhere. Like I said, we'll speak about mutations in a bit. And I've, I've waffled on a bit of this bit, but you know, whatever. Um, but yeah, let's talk about mutations now because there's nothing really. Uh, so put that on again. All right, so we're going to speak about mutations now. 
So what can we do with the watery bee? Okay, that's not, we'll, we'll forget about, that was just a little aside on genetic sampling there. Um, and uh, I just want, I just want, I just want to check that one result, just to check that, that it's not good, it's not going to be like a blend of bees in there. Um, all right. So, watery bees then. Interesting if you if you actually put use the queen in NAI, it actually doesn't take you to that section. All right, so we will look at what we can do with the watery bees. In we don't do anything with them. That is bollocks, though, isn't it? I'm pretty sure you can. No, the war bees are not here, are they? Hmm. No, you can't do anything with them. I didn't even notice this actually. So there's actually some more interesting stuff with the bees. This found it. Funnily enough, I was actually looking at AgriCraft, and, th and this is a bit like what AgriCraft is like. Uh, you know what it is? Which I'm so used to water bees being just like. Yeah. That is interesting, isn't it? Because you see, what's actually happened here is in the previous episode, I was thinking, look at the Earthen Queen, the Water Queen. No? <laughs> okay. Hmm, interesting. I've heard about this bee actually, the tricky queen. All right. So there's there's one other thing that we could think about. Let's look at the modest bee. Let's do that because at least we know the modest bee is, is a proper, um, um, you know, simple bee. So from modest, hmm, where do you get the frugal, I wonder? All right, what we're going to do, I think, we're just going to go to cultivated. We'll look at where we get, so modest with marshy, modest with forest, modest with meadows. That's interesting, though, that watery, that makes me think that they, the, uh, that they actually changed the order around, that's why this, because before water would be a basic element, and that's like the most advanced thing. It's almost like a complete swap. Okay, so what I want to do, this, this is going to be a little bit of a topsy-turvy episode, let's be honest. Yeah, I will I will do a more focused episode at another point. Um, so you see, this is still, this is, this is now what I wanted it to be. Yeah. So you see, by doing it like this, and then I could put production upgrade. So yeah, so that's. I think I've actually quite, quite fairly shown the. Um, mm. Interesting. That's so interesting with that. I really didn't think it was like that. Because this is, this is what I did in the previous episode, if you recall. Yeah. 
Now, okay, so... Yeah, what I might do, yeah, um, is just, I think I'll just have this episode separately now, I think about it, um, because things do not happen at all how I thought they would. Um, and also, this was just a good way to look at some of the early uh, uh, blank, uh, the gene sample stuff, which was quite cool. Um, I'm surprised the watery comb isn't better than that, then. So this may be it. This may be. This looks like it's probably some sort of uh, balancing issue thing, like this thing, for instance. Because I kind of know what's going on in the development at the moment, so it makes it a little bit easier to understand what's going on. Um, for instance, this has got no. Um, this has got no. Yeah, so you see, this is a, you see part of this, the new stuff in, in um, Magic Bees is part is partly to do with this stuff in, in terms of bringing a lot of the new stuff in. But I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave it for this episode for now, and I'm going to focus on something else uh, next episode.